Hi, my name is Tracy Richardson, and I am at Teaching Lean Incorporated, and I'm here to do the eight-step problem solving process. I was hired at process. Toyota Motor Manufacturing Kentucky in 1988 as a team member in the plastics department. I was a team member for three years, and I was promoted to team leader, and I was a team leader for five years, and then promoted to group leader in 1996, and I was a group leader for two and a half years before I left the company to go into consulting so in 1990. we're looking at the eight-step problem-solving process. So we look at the methodologies. We're looking at step one is being clarify the problem. So we're looking at what is the current situation, what is the ideal situation, and looking at the gap that comes between those two, and also looking at what's called the ultimate goal, which is the purpose or why we're solving the problem. Once we understand what step one is in clarifying the problem, then we look at step two, which is break down the problem. So it allows us to make the problem uh, more manageable, it gets it into smaller pieces, and we look at that as, okay, we need to find a prioritized problem, which then allows us to go look at the process, go to the GIMBA, see the actual work, and ask the workers what is truly happening at the process. Therefore, to look at point of occurrence. So the point of occurrence is what's bad happening in the process, so to speak, what's a, de a discrepancy being taken or a defect being made. So then we look at step three, target setting, and that's looking at, okay, we've got to uh, look at addressing the point of occurrence, and through that we need to know how much, and we need to know by when, and that needs to be specifically set to the point of occurrence. So with that, you're looking at going on to root cause analysis, and that looks at asking why. So when we look at asking why, we have to establish a cause and effect relationship. We may have to get past a symptom. We have to go and see, and we have to look at what is truly the root cause. When we look at root cause, that takes us to the next step, which is developing countermeasures. So we have to brainstorm those countermeasures. We have to look at those with some kind of criteria or evaluative measure, like how feasible it may be, how effective it may be, what the cost perspectives are, and you know some type of criteria to say, have we looked at this as a company before we go and implement? Once we choose which one we select to go implement, we develop what's called an implementation plan, and that's called a Gantt chart. So we look at what are we trying to do, who's doing it, where is it happening, and when, as far as a timeline, are we going to make this happen in. From that, we look at seeing the countermeasures through. So it's kind of the status report, if you will, of our implementation plan. It allows us to report to others, inform to others, and consult with our stakeholders and communicate what we're trying to accomplish with our countermeasures. And once we do that, then we go into step seven, which is to monitor and process uh, the results. So we're looking at what process did we use to get the results. We're looking at did we meet the target. We're also looking at three viewpoints, which is what the company, what do we do for the company, what do we do for the customer, and what is our own viewpoint, meaning what did I learn from this process? You know, we're looking at PDCA, so we're trying to follow that process. What did I learn from the process? Repetition from this process and practice allows us to get better and better each time, so this thinking becomes intrinsic. So step eight is standardize and share. So at this point, we're reflecting the overall process. We're also looking at how we can standardize this new method or this new process or a new policy. We do that maybe through a flow chart, a check sheet, new standardized work. It's just being able to take what we change, standardize it, and what we call share that with other effectors. If there's any take home in this process, in this um, training that we're doing, is I'm really trying to get the participants to think differently about problem solving. And the take home for me would be is for the participants to be able at each step to learn what questions to ask.